Hey, welcome on in. It's another edition of the uh, Gary Anderson Coaches Show, and it's good to be back here at Old Chicago as we get ready for the opening game for Utah State football as they get set for a showdown against uh, Boise State on the road at the Smurf Turf, and we've got a lot to break down on today's show. But, Coach, uh, hey, it's game game week. It's kind of nice. It's still mid to late October, but it's always nice to get a season started. It is. The kids are excited, and uh... You know, we're, we're excited for them to have an opportunity, and uh, they've got some juice and energy. And uh, to get out and actually play this season, and it looks like it's going to come our way, is uh, a huge positive for yeah, everybody involved, the Aggie Nation, the coaches, but most importantly, the players are going to have an opportunity to go compete and play against a, a great opponent, a quality opponent game one. Got to imagine, too, there for a lot of players, they probably really felt like at best we'll play in February, maybe not at all until next fall, and then in a matter of weeks have the season kind of, fall on their lap and say, all right, we're going to go. Um, how do you feel like they've handled the roller coaster over the last, you know, six months or so? <laughs> there's definitely been ups and downs. Um, there's been good days and bad days. And I think at the end of the whole thing, when this year's over with and they look back in January, that they're, um, they're, they're going to learn some things from yeah. this from an adversity standpoint and, you know, just uh, hanging in there and battling through some things. And if you have some things taken away, you keep on fighting. But overall, I would say they've handled it well. Uh, especially when this opportunity came back for them to be able to, you know, know that there was a chance to be able to play. And uh, there's so much that has gone into this. We, we're practicing not completely different, but it's very different the way we're practicing. It's very different how we handle them, getting them in shape you know, as far as our from the weight room to four days a week. They're, they're lifting three days, four days a week during the camp. And the list goes on and on. And they've, they've handled all those well, and they've trusted our system. And we're asking them to respect the process as we continue to go through. Um, and so far, so good, you know, so we'll see when we get out there. You were on our uh, flagship station earlier today on, on 1280 The Zone, and you mentioned something that your practices have more of an NFL feel to them. Kind of explain what that's like. Yeah, well, I, don't, I didn't play in the NFL, so I don't know those, but I've, <laughs> yeah. I've been educated on that. And uh, so what we've had to do, just because of, number one, the number of kids on our team, we're way down. We usually carry 113 kids, and we have, you know, uh, 88 kids out there, but 10 of those kids are specialists. So we're down about 73, 72 healthy kids on the field, which doesn't allow you to have scout teams when it's usually 100. Um, so that being said, you have to be real careful how we practice. So the, what we've done is we uh, go to the NFL style model, which is basically the offense services the defense and the defense services the offense, and you're looking for quality reps. There's some po there's some positive things out of that because it's it's more good on good, but you also don't get quite as many reps, and you have to practice longer. So yeah. uh, we've done that for the last couple days, and I think our kids have uh, – handled it we've educated them on why we're doing it how we're doing it and i'm really proud of our scout team kids because they are working their tails off and they're always a vital part of what we do and how we go about the practices and we always talk about how valuable they are but this year uh more valuable than they've ever been before because we cannot get it done without them could that help in the acceleration of their development Absolutely. You know, they're getting they're getting better reps against quality players. And, you know, and, and even some of our twos are in there reading cards right now and getting it done. But, you know, today, Jason and Andrew took most of the reps with the two uh, with the scout team offense um, wow. in the red zone just to uh, to give the, the defense the a look that they needed. And um, it's good for those kids to get in, and compete and throw the ball in those situations. So it's, it, you know, like I say, it's, it's, it's very different, but it, it's fun. It's exciting and it's energetic for myself and the staff to see kids with a great attitude that are excited to go compete. And they know that it's a short window here. I mean, there's, you know, right now you look at them and you say, hey, guys, you got, you know, you got, you got seven more Tuesdays guaranteed here. So that's going to go pretty <laughs> quick on you. So let's make sure we're understanding where we're at. Well, let's enjoy every bit of this ride because no uh, it, it's going to be certainly a, uh, a quick one, too. And, and the fact is, no bye week either. I mean, yeah. this is, you know, once this thing starts going, this freight train starts rolling, there's, there's no stopping. Yep, and then they know there's no guarantees. You know, they've already had one game canceled before it even got started in the, in the Mountain West, and there's games canceled all over the place. So hopefully we stay away from that, but there is no buys. And, you know, that, that's why there's, a, there's even more of an importance on how you train them because there's not a week to recover. I mean, we've, we'll back off on them now, and they're yeah. going to rock and roll, and then they're going to – for the third game of the year, they're going to jump into a Thursday game with basically one practice during that week. And um, so it is what it is, but I think just continually educating them on, you know, we're going to do our best to take care of you and listening to the kids um, and, and listen to the coaches, the training staff, all of us together, and the strength coaches are a huge part of this. So obviously, um, you know, whenever, whenever you uh, have a quarterback that is uh, the stature of Jordan Love and is a first-round guy, everybody's going to have a million-dollar question 
who's going to be the guy. And I'm sure all leading up to your decision, everybody wanted to know, is it going to be Jason Shelley? And you made that announcement earlier in the week. Uh, but you've also mentioned Andrew Peasley is going to get some opportunities out there too. Talk us through the uh, the decision-making process in which uh, Jason Shelley will get your start. Well, again, they both competed at a very high level. And uh, Andrew, just the, this, the, this year to be able to get the reps that he's gotten, you forget that he, you know, he played high school football, obviously, and he was probably the best player on the football field 90% of the games that he played and did what he did. And then he came into college, and, and he was you know early in camp. I'm sure he got reps. Spring, he got reps. But then he was the third guy. And so he hasn't had a lot of time playing and even being a second-team quarterback and competing for a job. And I just think Andrew did a great job of continually growing. And, again, he did it again today. He just he got better out there as he goes through time, and he's handling the situation well. So that being said, I think he deserves and what that opportunity is and when it hits and when it falls. I don't know that, but it's not going to necessarily be because Jason's playing bad or whatever it may be. You know, we need to be prepared to have two quarterbacks more so than ever this year. Yeah. And there's not a reason to not give Andrew an opportunity to go out there and compete and play. And, you know, everybody, whoever wants to make anything out of that, there's nothing to make out of it other than an opportunity to say, hey, you know what, Jason, yes, he's our starter. Andrew deserves an opportunity to come in and compete, and he can carry the offense the exact same way that Jason does because he's athletic. He can run, and, and, you know, sky's the limit. As him as a freshman again this year, I'm telling you, the kid is special as he continues to grow and develop, and he has to be a little patient. He doesn't like being patient. Um, <laughs> Jason's done a great job of just coming in and just fitting in with the team, much like the other kids that have come in from Utah. He's, you know, he's been a leader. He's there for his teammates and, you know, takes care of him. He competes, and he's competed at a high level and played well, and I expect Jason to play well, and that's what he came here for is to play well. So if, you know, if he's not playing well, then uh, we're not doing a good enough job with him, and neither is he. You were at Utah when he came in for um, uh, for the for the starter and and led. Utah to a Pac-12 championship game. Yep, Tyler got hurt in the Arizona State game, if I remember right, and Jason walked in there, and um, you know that that wasn't a good day for us on that day when I was at Utah. The A State took us took took care of us pretty good on that day, and but he came back, and you know we had to win that went out basically to get ourselves into that championship game, and Jason led us and took us to that position to to get us in, a, in, in the championship game. So he's been in the moment. You know, he's a team player. He really doesn't have an agenda other than he wants to be on a good team and he wants to compete and play. And, um, and he's, he, he's very genuine. And, and DHC is much the same when he's come in. It's Jalen Warren and it's DHC. DHC doesn't have this, you know, it's, or it could be DHC and Jalen Warren. It's not, it's, you need two good backs and you need two quarterbacks to be able to play, especially in a year like this. And I can't emphasize that enough. I think you've got uh, two of the best running backs uh, combo running backs in, in, in the Mountain West Conference uh, with Jalen Warren and, and Devontae Henry Cole. I mean, those are two really special running backs. Could, be, could uh, possibly have really good years for you. Yeah, we, Jalen has just done, you know, last year it was unfortunate when he got hurt and he missed, what, half the year. And G. Bright had to take on the, the full load back there. And if you're going to be where you want to be as, as a football team and the way we want to be able to run the ball and start to get an identity to physically run the football, um, that's, that's, that's a start. That's a, we need to get into that position to be able to, you know, win in this conference. Keep in mind this year we're playing in, basically late October, the month of November, and half the month of December. So I, I doubt it's going to be 75 and sunny. So <laughs> we're going to have to be able to pound the rock. But we've, we've, we wanted to get that identity. We lost some time in the weight room with that identity, obviously. But that's fine. We'll get that up when we make that up when we make that up. But our scheme is, is we want to pound the football. And you need to have two or three backs to do that. And quite frankly, I think we got four or five backs that can play for us and do some good things. But those two that you mentioned there, and Jalen has been a good leader. He's worked his tail off. He's rehabbed. He's back where he needs to be. And, you know, DHC's done a nice job, obviously, again, of just fitting in the program and, and away we go. So John Drentry's done a good job. Malcolm has done a good job. You know, those kids, have, uh, they've, all, they've all come in and battled and fought like crazy. So it's going to be fun to watch them play. Uh, and then the offensive line, it was super young last year. Yeah. Um, and they got another year of uh, experience under their belt. What do you expect out of them this year? Well, they've, they've, they've been an unselfish, unselfish group also. You know, we had some injuries in camp that uh, took some kids out, and now they're battling their way to get back. Our numbers were extremely low. We were down to you know, seven offensive linemen that we were functioning with for a period of time. And, um, you know, Andy Koch is a great example. He jumps in. He's going to start at guard on Saturday, and um, he's happy with that. He's... Uh, you know, he's doing what's best for the team, and that's that's for him to be able to play guard. And um, they've been a, a crew that has developed. They've worked hard. I'm proud of how they've worked through in the weight room when they had the opportunity, and I'm proud how they've handled the weight room through camp. So, um, you know, it's still young in age and young in reps, but uh, we've talked about this for a long time. They got a lot of reps underneath them last year. They got a lot of starts underneath them last year, and I'm excited to see those starts continue to build up and pile up as, as 
you know, the games go by. Um, but they, they want to be physical, and I think the tight ends want to be physical. And if you're going to beat Boise and you're going to win this side of the conference and get to that championship game, you have to be physical. Um, and that will be tested mightily this week. Uh, we're going to talk later on in the program to Carson Terrell, and I wanted to get your thoughts on him because, you know, he, he was kind of under Dak's shadow a little bit. And then, and then of course, uh, Caleb Rep came in and was really productive for you. And he's had opportunities, but this year he's – He's going to be the guy. Yeah, and, and he's proven he wants to be the guy. Let me just tell you that. He has worked his tail off, and he's a big target. Um, he's got his body where he needs to be. He looks fantastic. He practices hard every day. You know, DJ Tialavea coming in and, and coaching him in that situation has been awesome because DJ is just such a technician, and that's what DJ was as a player. He was a technician, and he started here as a defensive lineman and worked his way into a tight end, so he learned it, and then he went on and played in the NFL. Um, so he, he's really helped – the, the development of the tight end position. But I'd, I'm telling you, Carson is uh, so, should be someone that uh, people have to deal with and handle within our offensive structure. And I know he's excited to get started. And, uh, you know, where, where he goes in the game of football, I think it's uh, there's a high ceiling on that young man. Well, we're just getting started here at Old Chicago. I'd love for you to come by and hang out with us uh, here in Logan. It's the Gary Anderson Coaches Show. We'll talk more about this Utah State team. Also preview what Boise State has back for this game coming up on Saturday. And then coming up a little bit later on, we'll chat with Carson Terrell as well as Devin Tompkins. It's all straight ahead. You're listening to the Gary Anderson Coaches Show from Learfield IMG College. Hey, brother. Welcome on back. You're listening to the Gary Anderson Coaches Show here on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Thanks for making us part of your evening. All right, Coach, uh, we talked a lot on the offensive side, uh, and I'm going to get to the defensive side here in a moment. But uh, you there's a player about offense. Anyway. Yeah, there's a player that you've got to replace that I think uh, is is sometimes people don't really consider the uh, the uh, special teams action. Uh, but Dominic Eberly was just, I mean, he was money for you for uh, for the last three years here at Utah State. Uh, tell us a little bit about Connor Coles and what he did to earn that job. Well, first, Dom was an absolute weapon and, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to say a security blanket, but you felt good when he walked yeah. out there. And, uh, you know, hes I think he's got an opportunity now and is playing again. Hopefully he deserves that shot. Um, Connor's been... You know, really good the last week or so. Um, he's been he was good before that, but he's been you know on on call. I think he's understanding you know how how I keep my leg strong and don't overkick. And you know, you get out there and sometimes kickers want to kick every day and they go out there and kick seven days in a row. And I'm like, well, 
No wonder you're not hitting it well. You're tired. Yeah. When you go on a bench in the max in, in the weight room and do your max bench, you don't go in and do 10 sets before you max. I mean, that's not how you do it. So um, I think he's got some, some mojo with him that the timing is good. Pata is a great leader for that crew, and Chris has come in and done a nice job of holding, and Jason's done some holding for us also, so he'll be involved in, in the holding part of that situation. And, you know, happy the way he's competed, and we brought in some competition against him, and Connor, quite frankly, blew the competition out of the water. It's not even close. And he is our starting uh, PAT field goal guy, so we're excited about uh, him. How do you uh, – and how hard is it to replicate pressure in practices and scrimmages? Well, we've done quite a bit of it, and you know, because we replaced a lot of people in those spots on those wings, and it's a, it's a critical unit to be able to – block the inside protection and also to be able to handle those wings that are out there and um, we're, we're kind of low on those guys in that position so we've had to train some defensive linemen to be in those positions and so we have had a lot of reps at that now how that carries over to the yeah. game just like everything else game one you're sitting there saying okay well, we, we should be okay and it looks good and um, but but we have done a lot of reps which puts pressure on him in fact one day we you know, tried to take one off his foot and flipped him up in the air a couple times. So when he landed, it popped right back up. So that was good to see. But it was definitely a 15-yard penalty. Yeah. Uh, on the defensive side of the, bo uh, of, of the board, uh, I know that uh, obviously you do bring back some people on the defensive backfield. Let's we'll start at the safety position. Shaq and uh, Troy, uh, I know you expect big things out of them this year. Yeah, um, absolutely do. And, uh, you know, Shaq has had a really good camp. In fact, we uh, this year, instead of selecting captains, four captains for the team, we went and ca uh, selected captains or leaders, I guess you could say, for the defensive backfield, offensive line, and so on and so forth. And Shaq was uh, voted his teammates as, as the uh, the leader for that defensive backfield. And, mm. you know, he's really grown up, um, I would say that, and which is nice to see. The Shaq had some ups and downs and kind of some inconsistencies as far as where he was. Was it a good day or a bad day or was it this or was it that? And I think I haven't seen that this year as far as you know, just coming out every day and understanding you got to you got to grind. You can't worry about how the day went or what it was or what's going on in the in the practice. You got to jump up and and uh, fight your tail off every day and compete at a high level and bring your teammates around you. And he's done that, and he has high expectations for himself, and we have high expectations for him. So Shaq's the leader there. Troy's done is also a, the silent leader, I would say. And Troy was a great player for us a year ago. He's missed a lot of time. He's had an injury, and uh, when we get Troy back, we'll we'll see. I don't know exactly when that's going to take place, and. Um, it may be this week. It may be two or three weeks from now. It just depends. But, uh, you know, Troy is, is definitely a tremendous player, and he was probably our best defender last season. So Tatum get some, get some Tatum, action there? Tatum will get some time. Jared Green will get some time back there in the backside of the defensive backfield, the safety position. Uh, on the uh, flip side of the corners, uh, a guy that you could really tell started to figure things out was Cam Lampkin last yeah. year. And yeah. I anticipate you, he'll take another step. Cam is, is a tremendous athlete, great speed, uh, has really learned to – you know, study and, and spend time. I think Mark Orfe has done a tremendous job with those back end kids, just, you know, spending the time with them and letting them understand how, how things, uh, you know, you mentioned Dom, and then Dom walked him office today and sat down, and he's like, Coach, I'm not just playing my position anymore. I'm seeing what the other guys are doing and where they're at, and I think that's carried over for Cam as a young player, as a freshman playing corner, to now seeing the big picture and not just being out there on an island by himself. But he is a uh, uh, again, a high ceiling for a young, young player who's, you know, had some uh, good experience to this point and has high expectations for himself. So excited about Cam. And, you know, I think Zahadre, we can't talk about the corners without talking about that young man. He is, you know, he's hurt all last year, had the broken foot, battled back from that. Uh, and Z is, is really grown up. So I'm, I'm excited to see them against really good receivers this week. And they'll, they'll know how they stack up against the elite probably, uh, you know, that, that we play week in and week out. The Boise guys are going to be right up with the best of the best that we play, and they've done a nice job. Uh, how do your linebackers look? Well, that's a big question. You yeah. know, that's going to be something that uh, we've got to keep a long, hard look at and make sure we're getting the best boys uh, in the, on, on the game, in the game, every situation that we get. You know, Kevin Metzenheimer was voted the leader there, and Kevin needs to make sure that he leads by example. He needs to keep his weight down. Um, he needs to make sure that he understands that, you know, he's a senior and the expectation level is for him to play at a high level uh, week in and week out and lead his crew. And there can't be ups and downs in, in that from the way he carries himself. And I'm excited to see him grow and develop. And, you know, the, the, the other spot is 
you know, it's a, we're going to wait and see. We had AJ there for a little bit, and, you know, we moved guys around, and, and Eric's going to be in, in that mix as we go through to definitely fight for that spot. Cash Gilliam's in that position to be able to fight for that spot. So I feel like we have three or four guys, um, un, you know, not unproven. Kevin's played a lot of football. Eric played a lot of football last year, but the, we got three to four kids in that position. They're going to have to roll through there and play at a high level if we're going to be not just an average defense. If they're just average, then we're just going to be average as we go through these eight games. They have to play better than average football and, and be good to great for us to uh, get reach our goals on the defensive side of the ball. We talked about the Utah transfers and just coming in and being able to figure things out and, uh, and, and just adjust to the way you do things at Utah State. Talk about Marcus Moore. Uh, yeah. another Pac-12 transfer and what he's meant to this team. Well, I think Marcus has, has done a nice job. There's been a transformation for him. I believe Marcus kind of, you know, he came in here and I don't think he, he, well, he didn't know what to expect, right? He came into Logan, Utah and uh, very different from where he grew up, very different yeah. from where he went to college and, and things went uh, fast for him. And I, but I think he grew a real appreciation for our work ethic, our toughness, how we grind in the weight room, how we go about things. And there were some shocking times for him to understand. Um, and, and we asked him, let him understand, hey, we are a, a young football team on that defensive front where you're at. And so you've done it. You know, they're going to look at you and say, well, you've played in the Pac-12. And they're not going to put you on a pedestal, but they're going to look at you and say, how is your work ethic? Well, I think that that kind of shocked him a little bit. Um, because it was hard. I think it was, it's harder here than anywhere he's been. I promise you that much. Uh, a lot harder. And he's adjusted to that now. We've challenged him. We've let him know what's expected of him, and that is to be a great player in this league. And so he'll he'll to get his opportunity, number one, this was Saturday. He's starting at that left defensive end position. And he has the ability to be a difference maker. I think he has the ability to be a next-level guy, but he has to create that opportunity, not us. And um, I like where he is, but I'm not going to stop challenging that young man because he came here. I told him I was going to challenge him. I'm going to challenge him every day until I see him you know, reach his potential, and we got a ways to get that done. You take pride in that, that uh, kids show up here from the Pac-12 and like, whoa, it's a lot, it's a lot tougher and harder than I've ever had to go through a, a college football practice yeah. or something along those lines. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just kind of how uh, Utah, if Utah State's going to be where we need to be and, and build, you know, consistently be where you want to be, right? And that's what we all want, continually to get continued, continued success year in and year out and battle through and have that tough-minded ability to be able to grind it out. And um, uh, sure, I think we all would take pride in that because that's what I think Aggie Nation wants. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what I want. And, you know, a tough, hard-nosed football team that's tough in the classroom, that's tough off the field um, when they leave the facility and they're tough when they practice, whether it's the off-season, spring ball, or the season, and they deal with adversity. And, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, Marcus has grown in, in, in really some quality ways as he's been here, and I'm excited to see him play again. I know a number that drove you nuts last year on the defensive side of the ball was uh, red zone uh, defensive touchdowns. Uh, teams uh, scored touchdowns 78% of the time they got inside the red zone. Uh, what do you do to try to address that? I mean, what is there a different style or anything differently you do things when you, when teams get inside the red zone? Well, I think the biggest thing on you know on defense is when you get in those positions and not not to put the the the, the load of the weight on the players, but yeah. you need you need to have guys that make plays in special situations. And a lot of time in the red zone, you're playing aggressive defense. You're blitzing. Um, you know, some, you, if three yards and a cloud of dust in the red zone is a touchdown in three plays, right? So you can't do that. You have to take some chances. You've got to be able to have playmakers show up and make great plays. You've got to have kids tackle in space. And so you can get exposed quickly in the red zone with your athleticism and your ability to be able to make plays. And um, so that's something we have to have. We've, we've got to, as a staff, we need to continue to build it for the playmakers. Yes, if there's a great blitzer, let's get in blitzing. Um, if we can play man coverage, let's get them playing man coverage and do the things we need to be able to do. But kids got to step up in the red zone and make plays. And coaches got to put them in that spot. But again, you know me well enough to know this game is about one thing and one thing only on Saturdays, and it's recruiting. Coaching is so overrated. Taking care of kids and recruiting is what that's how you win championships and, and, and that that is a big thing in the red zone. You got you got you got ballers, you're gonna get out yeah. of the red zone and make plays. You're better than those guys. Could justice be that guy? I think so. You know, Justice has done a great job of gaining some weight and you know, got him back. He's he's been like the you know, the the Jack of all trades, right? Yeah. In, two years ago, I watched tape, and it's inside linebacker, and then it's outside linebacker, defensive end. And, you know, he, he really seems to be at home uh, at defensive end. He's put on the weight. He's got great natural strength, his ability. And Frank's done a great job of, you know, putting his swing onto the defensive line as far as how he coaches them. And, and uh, that, that's been very it's comfortable for justice. And he needs to be that playmaker, and, and he's the captain of the defensive line. And so we expect him to lead those guys every single day. But, you know, Justin has been 
been ex justice has been explosive in camp. Um, he stayed healthy, and he works his tail off. And boy, he, he loves practice. He loves football games. I know he's excited. So I, I hope we get to see him make a bunch of plays. So uh, as far as uh, Frank down on the field and Stacy in the booth, or vice versa, how does that look? You have to ask them. I don't know that. I think I think that would be correct. That would be my bet. If I was going to bet, I think Frank would be down and Stacy would be up. That's how it was in scrimmages, and I yeah. don't expect that to change. But uh, you know, they'll 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 work good as a tandem, and and the rest of the staff. And you know, I, I think the staff is 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 has done good. There's a great mix of young and old throughout the offense, defense, and special teams. And you know, I guess I'm still the old man. Shram's older than me, so I guess he's older <laughs> than me by just a bit. But. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, those two have done a good job of working together. And, you know, we moved Rock back over to that side of the ball now, and that's been really, really good. As, as DJ went through and showed, as I said earlier, that he can handle those tight ends. We moved Rock with his experience. And you want to put a coach where his most experience is if you have the opportunity. And so it's, it's a good crew over there that works hard. We'll continue on coming up next. We'll answer some of your questions. We'll also talk more about what to expect out of Boise State. Uh, a lot of weapons on offense, some uh, transition for them on defense. Uh, it's all straight ahead. You're listening to the Gary Anderson Coaches Show live here at Old Chicago on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Come on back. You're listening to the Gary Anderson Coaches Show. Coming up here in about six or seven minutes, you're also going to hear from uh, two players that are expected to have huge uh, contributions this year's team, Devin Tompkins as well as uh, Carson Terrell. Uh, they will join us, and we'll get to know a little bit more about those young men. Uh, I, I'm sure that, you know, you don't have to be a, a brilliant offensive coordinator, um, but you'd probably tell Bodie readers, like, hey, 
Devin Tompkins is really fast. You may yeah. want to find a way to get him involved. There, there's no doubt. He is uh, he's a special talent, and he is uh, a special, special young man. You know, we anybody that's watched Aggie football needs to you know sit there and say, yeah, he's a special young man. But you, his story is so unique and so special. Uh, but we need to get the ball in his hands. Absolutely, yes. Um, and he needs to touch it a lot. You know, if you walk out of a game and say Devin Tompkins has two or three touches, well, we've all made a, a big mistake. And, um, you know, he expects the ball. He wants the ball. He wants to make some great plays and do some special things. So he's an exciting young man. But if, you if you know, you have him on the air tonight, if you can just uh, have him tell a bit of his story, and as I don't know how much of his story of his life he wants to be able to tell you, but, you know, he's a dad. Um, and he takes care of his two children like uh, nobody else. Um, and I know he wouldn't mind if I said this. He has a, a Down syndrome little boy, and he is a fantastic dad. And juggling that and, you know, where the kids are and, and how he's taking care of his life and trying to play football to be the best he can, uh, it's just an amazing story that uh, I'm blessed and to be around him, quite frankly. And that's – he's, he's – I wake up every day, and Stacy, I know that's one of the reasons we're back here at this place is because we needed to be there for that kid, and, and it matters a lot to me. It means he, wow. he's special. We got a question over here. Go ahead, yep. sir. Well, we're not just going to go rocket fast. You know, the one thing our goal will not to just be get people tired and. Um, then put the pedal to the metal and, and, and just race down the field. We need to play complementary football. And I, I don't think you, you know, to win a championship, I know you have to play complementary football, um, whether it's good weather, bad weather. Um, there's days when you can go fast, and yes, we do want to go fast sometimes, and we do have that pace to put the pedal to the metal and go rocket fast. We have the ability to um, get on the line and look over, which we did a lot of that last year. Uh, and then we have the ability to huddle, and we have the ability to play with one tight end, two tight ends, three tight ends, and maybe four tight ends if we need to. So we want to play a physical brand of football when we need. We want to spread it out and get the ball in the playmaker's hands. Uh, but in my opinion, if you're going to have a consistent program week, week in, week out, year in and year out, you have to play complementary football for offense, defense, and special teams and just go and rock it fast all the time. I do not believe will get you to that position. And you watch the teams that have gone rocket fast in the past, and they don't do it anymore. Um, Oregon doesn't go rocket fast. Oklahoma doesn't go rocket fast. The one team that does go rocket fast right now, uh, two of them played last week, and it was uh, UCF. I think they lead the country in total plays. If I remember looking that up on the stat sheet, and they played Memphis, I believe, who goes rocket fast. They snap at 80, 90 snaps a game. And the final score of that game was like 103 to 102, right? <laughs> um, so that it's not complimentary football. I don't believe to consistently win your championships unless – you are just so much more gifted athletically and your ability to recruit is that way above the rest of the people in your conference. And uh, so that's, that's how we're going to play. And that's how we played in the past year when we had an opportunity with some great players and not me, but the kids were able to, you know, flip things and get it where it needed to be and have a, a chance to compete for championships. Let's talk a little bit about this Boise State team uh, returning uh, Hank Bachmeyer, who played uh, – about half the season last year dealt with some injuries, but when he was in and he was healthy, uh, is appears to be another long line of uh, really good quarterbacks there at Boise State. Yeah, Hank is he's 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 athletic. He's he throws the ball well. Um, I think he does a really nice job of, of of leading the offense when he's in there. And the other young man, I forget his name. I apologize to him. Um, I'm sure he's not listening to this, but he was a great quarterback that came in last year and played great against yeah. us. Um, and many other teams that he played against. So Hank's more than a product of the system. I think he's a kid that uh, is extremely competitive and uh, you know throws the deep ball well, um, handles his team, handles the pressure, and whether they're you know, whatever situation they're in, he's, he's played at a high level. He's got some really good people around him, a tremendous running back um, and, and wide receivers that are special. They're replacing some kids on the offensive line. Um, Bates, the tight end, is a great player. Recruited him a long time ago. Seems like 100 years ago that I recruited him. But uh, obviously we didn't win that recruiting battle, and he's at Boise State, and, and he's a tremendous tight end. I think he's a next-level tight end for sure. We have another question. Go ahead. Hey, hey. Yep. <laughs> Okay, perfect. Uh, and I, yes, I do like the shirt. It looks good. It looks really good. Um, the, as far as the differences within the offense, I think what you'll just see is you know the the ability to 
structurally you sure would like to be able to get into a position to look at your playmakers and have an opportunity to continually get the ball within their hands. And, um, you know, that that's a special thing. And to be able to do that, that's key with, with DT and potentially McGriff. We'll see how he does on game day. But he sure looks like he should be out there and make some plays. And he's done a good job in camp. And, you know, how you're going to run the football physically to be able to run the football, make the young, make the, make the players that don't get paid to tackle, tackle. That's something that I think is real important with it. When I say that, I mean corners get paid to cover, right? Let's put them in some positions where, t where they have to be able to line up and tackle. They all say they want to tackle, but do they really want to tackle? Let's find out. Let's find out if they want to tackle in the fourth quarter. Um, so I think those are some important things that are out there for it. And then just being dyna dynamic and being different by formation um, from everything from whatever we do best. Is it fly sweep? Let's put that into the arsenal. Is it uh, being in 11 personnel and, and then adapting to our players that, to give them a chance to execute at a high level and, and use their abilities to the best of our abilities as coaches to get the ball to the playmakers. And if we can sit back and do that, then I think we've done a good job as a, as a coaching staff. If we're asking the kids to do things that they functionally can't do real well then that's a bad coach. Probably doesn't break your heart too much that there's no fans in the stands there at Boise State. Uh, <laughs> but with that said, though, that probably gives a little juice, you know, when you go on the road and you have the fans getting after you. Yeah. Um, you know, how do you – I mean, obviously, it's college football. You shouldn't need any extra motivation, but – Sometimes you have to provide that juice yourself. Do you worry about that at all? Yeah, we've talked about it, you know, and, and, and going to Boise is a very difficult place to play. It's like, you know, coming here, it's a hard place to play. And we've got, we've got unbelievable fans. They have unbelievable fans. So it is definitely an advantage, and um, it, they won't be there in this game. So, but – you are going to have to bring your own juice. You are going to bring your own energy. Um, I, I guess there's some piped in crowd noise. I, we're going to hear tomorrow what that crowd noise is. There's some level that they take it up to that you wow. get to bring into the stadium. So um, I don't know what that's going to sound like, but we'll find out at practice tomorrow. Uh, but but it will be, you know, it'll be different. And the kids need to understand it. And what I've told them is I said, you know what, you practice every day like this. So really, if you're that much different on game day than you are on practice days, then you're not really being the competitor that you need to be. So it shouldn't make a big difference. But it'll feel different. You know, you're going to hear coaches on the other side probably yelling and say, do this or do that. And um, <laughs> sit there and listen to it. So it's, it, it, it'll all be a little, it'll all be a little strange, but uh, they'll, they'll handle it, I'm sure, as, as well as anybody else will. Well, Coach, we appreciate it. Uh, we're going to chat with some of your players coming up next, but I uh, look forward to catching up with you before the game and uh, talking about uh, hopefully a big uh, road W. Absolutely. We're excited to get out and compete, and I'm sure Aggie Nation is excited, so we're going to uh, jump on that bus and we're going to swing hard. Devin, Go Aggies. You got it. Devin Tompkins, Carson Terrell joins us next on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College.
joining us now and and in the day normally we'd love to have him come down here and hang out with us here at old chicago but in this day and age of uh, COVID, it's best to uh protect these players as much as possible carson terrell on the line with us as well as devin Tompkins. gentlemen how are you good how are you, how are you doing good hey devin let's start with you uh, how are things for you? And I know that you've got a lot on your plate. Coach just kind of talked a little bit about uh, you're the father of two. You're playing college football. How are you able to juggle all of that? Um, you know, it's all it's all from God. Honestly, He wouldn't give me anything I couldn't handle. But I just take it day by day, you know, and keep my head focused and understand that I can control only what I can control. You know, there's so much uh, fun. It's so much fun watching you play because. Obviously, the speed is just incredible. At what point were you, as a kid, did you realize, I'm just faster than everybody else out here? Uh, actually, it was my very first play playing football ever in Pop Warner. Um, I was seven years old, and it was during our, like my first Jamboree game ever, and I scored an 80-yard touchdown on my first uh, handoff, and I was just like, I like this is what I love to do. Like, I want to do this for the rest of my life, you know? I'm sure the adjustment to Logan – is a little bit different than what you're uh, what you're used to. What, what's that been like for you? Uh, honestly, it's been it's been really good. You know, because like I come from a city, and uh, Logan is you know there's not that much to do out here. So it's been able it's helped me a lot to focus on you know what it is I really want in life and everything. And it's given me the ability to actually spend a lot of time with my kids. You know, and just work on myself as a person. Coach A just mentioned that. Uh, he uh, he's thrilled to to be a part of your life and, and and to help you any way that he can. What has he and this coaching staff meant for you and and your family? Every, I mean, honestly, everything. Like they've helped me out so much. You know, they they're just amazing people to be around. You know, Coach A has just been a great inspiration to my life. You know, he's been a great help to my life, and I will always be grateful for him and everything he does for me and my family. Carson Terrell with us, uh, the uh, Lehigh Pioneer. How are you, Carson? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. All right, so this is one of my favorite recruiting stories. Uh, and, and Matt Wells uh, told us this on a coach's show, that uh, they really felt like they needed to offer you a scholarship, not watching you play football, but when you were wrestling. And that's when they felt like, you know what? This guy's uh, he's a bad man jam out there, and we need to find a way to get him on scholarship. Uh, I, I, did you take a lot of pride in playing a lot of different sports there at Lehigh? Uh, yeah, especially wrestling because, I mean, Wrestling is, wrestling is such a great character for to like build your character and stuff like that. So yeah, I took a lot of pride in wrestling. Uh, <laughs> what uh, what was your career like there at Lehigh on the mat? Uh, it was all right. Uh, I tried to juggle basketball and wrestling at the same time, which wow, looking back, probably wasn't the <laughs> best idea because I was, ended up being average at both. But um, it definitely prepared me for college life for sure. You know, we asked uh, we asked Devin this same question, but at what point were you playing football where you felt like, wow, I've, I may have a chance to get a scholarship here? Was there a moment or a game, or was it just kind of a kind of a process where you realized that you had a chance to be pretty good at this? Um, I mean, I wanted to play college football since I was really young, so it was something that I was always working towards. Um, so I mean, I, I don't think I really uh, really saw that being possible until probably my sophomore year uh had a good season and started getting some coaches talking to me so what was it about utah state that made you feel like this is where you needed to play football uh the culture uh the culture here is just different it's very uh personal and uh it just seemed like the care the coaches cared more about the players and yeah it was just it was a really good atmosphere to be around so, Devin, uh, let's talk a little bit about this season because for a moment there, it seemed like there was going to be no Mountain West Conference football, and then maybe in the spring, start in January, February, and then over the span of a couple of weeks, it got flip-flopped, and now you guys are going to be back out on the field on Saturday. What's this uh, What's this roller coaster been like for you? I mean, it's been, it's been interesting, honestly, you know, because – like, at first, you know, we're sitting out here watching everybody play. You know, they're about, like, week six, week seven into their games now. And we've just been watching. And it kind of hurt a lot, you know. And it was just – it sucked because it felt like we were sitting out for no reason at one point. You know what I mean? But how fast everything just changed, you know, from one section to another. It was just crazy. It shows you that anything is honestly possible. Carson, how about you? What 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 have these last few months been like for you? Um, I, I think D.C. hit it pretty well, but – 
yeah, just seeing other teams play when your team's not out there playing was kind of hard to deal with. But, um, I mean, the team's very excited now that we get the opportunity to play this Saturday. So Probably doesn't matter, Carson, if it's 12 games, 8 games, uh, whatever the number is. You guys are just happy to be back out there. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. Have yeah, you – I'm sorry. Fall uh, camp, ready uh, to get back on the field and stuff. So, have you thought about uh, about next year at all? And uh, you know, obviously, you're coming into a senior year, but you could very well have another year of uh, eligibility. Have you thought about what next year might look like for you? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll come back to school. I I mean, I've had a really good time here at Utah State, and um, I mean, might might as well use that extra extra time to develop more as a football player and as a person and be, be around the team more in Utah State. So, yeah, I'll probably come back next fall. I think there's some people here at Old Chicago that just did a fist pump uh, with, with you saying that because, you know, there's been, been some time in your career where, you know, Dax, uh, uh, you had to wait your time behind Dax and then Caleb Rep uh, had some opportunities. And this, do you really feel like this is this is your chance to really go out there and shine and, and take ownership of this position? Uh. I mean, yeah, I mean, the, I feel like I've had big roles on the team every year, just whether that be blocking or special teams and stuff like that. But um, with the new offense this year, yeah, the emphasis on the tight end has grown a lot. And, yeah, I'm really excited to – and the rest of the tight ends, too, we're really excited to take on this role and uh, really help the offense. So. DT, let's talk about your role in this offense. What's it been like with uh, with Coach Reeder, and and uh, what expectations do you have for this offense this year? Uh, I believe that this is going to be a really explosive offense. You know, we have a lot of different weapons in a lot of different places. You know, from the run, from the running backs to the quarterback to the tight ends, the receivers up front, the linemen. You know, it's just I feel I feel really great about it. You know, just seeing the way that we work and everything. We we have a lot of cleanup, of course, but. I believe that we're going to be really explosive this year for sure. Devin, what have you seen out of Jason Shelley so far? And, and, and throw Andrew Peasley in the mix as well. What have you seen from those two? They're both, they're both coming along really great. You know, it's, it's actually me and Shelley, like, you know, we, we chill a lot and uh, we talk a lot, basically, and we go over a lot of things together. So it's really, it's really cool to actually have someone out there that I'm able to uh, relate to a lot. Carson, <laughs> Carson, what have you seen from those two quarterbacks? Uh, they just love to compete, which makes it easier for us to get behind them as quarterbacks. And, I mean, they're both really good athletes as well. So it's been fun playing with them this fall camp, and it'll be fun this Saturday too. When uh, – is it been from a, like a, an X's and O's standpoint, is it sometimes like learning a new language, Carson, when you when you have a new offensive coordinator? Is there a lot of new terminology to learn, and is it a is it a tough learning curve to get up to speed on it? Um, yeah, I mean, there's been some things that are new, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's still football and, uh, like, yeah, the play, there'll be different plays and different play calls and different signaling, but, uh, I mean, I feel like I've got some good experience in college football and so the transition wasn't really hard. And I mean, I've had really good coaching too this fall camp, which has helped a lot. So the transition hasn't been too hard. Devin, you want to? Uh, I know that Jordan Nathan's going to do some punt returning, but you, you want to find some ways and get some opportunities back there as well this year. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> you know I believe that you know our <laughs> our um, special teams coordinator. He's he's a very smart man, Coach Rob, and Rob, and um, I believe you know he has a he has a really good scheme for each and every one of us. You know, DT, what are your uh, what are some of your goals this year? What do you what do you want to accomplish? Uh, I just want to win. I want. I, I want to win with my team, you know. And then whatever comes with that, you know, I, I gladly will take that. Carson, just how good can this offense be? Um, I think it can be really exciting. We got the, the pieces and we got them all together. I think this could be a really electrifying uh, offense this year. So it'll be exciting. Well, there's no better way, Carson. I know that you know you've uh, you've played at at, uh, at Utah State. This is going into your fourth year. You know what it's like to play against Boise State. Uh, obviously, uh, a great way to start the season uh, on the road, on the on the blue turf. How excited are you to get up there and uh, kick off the year? Uh, it's really exciting. 
um, since I've been here, we usually play Boise State towards the end of the year, yeah. so it's nice to uh, really see where we stand in the Mountain West right off the bat, so it'll, it'll be really fun. Devin, you looking forward to going up there to Boise? Of course, yes, I'm, I'm ready, you know. Since I've been here, at least we haven't won yet. We haven't beat them since I've been here, but third time's a charm, you know, going into my third year, so I'm really excited for this game. No doubt about it. Well, gentlemen, we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. Uh, good luck on Saturday, and uh, I think we're all excited to get this season started. Thank you for having us. Thank you. I much appreciate it. Yeah, we're excited to see uh, both those young men out on the field coming up on uh, coming up on Saturday. Carson Terrell, uh, tight end, and, of course, Devin Tompkins, wide receiver, uh, both great young men and great representatives of Utah State University. All right, remember, uh, pregame will begin at 4 o'clock. Kickoff is at 5 o'clock. Utah State opening up the season against uh, Boise State. And then the first home game coming up on Halloween night uh, when Utah State takes on San Diego State. So uh, a, lot to, uh, a lot to get excited about, a lot to uh, get ready for as Utah State opens up the year uh, and uh, the first of eight games uh, concluding in the middle of December against Colorado State. So make sure to join us pregame show beginning at 4 o'clock. Uh, kickoff is set for 5 o'clock live from Boise. It's Utah State and Boise State. That wraps it up for us. Big thanks to everyone here at Old Chicago. Thanks for everyone who came by. Big thanks to Carson Terrell and uh, Devin Tompkins, as well as Gary Anderson hanging out with us as well. This has been the Gary Anderson Coaches Show on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College.